Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and you're watching from JS to Remote Sensing. This is the second basic video tutorial about the processing of a Sentinel-2 image from download to classification. So, the first step is to download the Sentinel-2 images. We have these buttons here. and also in the SCP menu these uh, functions here we should select download sentinel2 and the main interface window will open so this is the interface for downloading sentinel2 images we should enter here username and password according to the service here and at the moment, with the Syab Copernicus, we should enter guests as a username and guests as password. Now we need to set the search area. In general, we could uh, uh, click this button and then uh, with the left click and the right click, define the upper left and the lower right corner of the area. But now enter these values for the upper left longitude enter 12 for the latitude 42 for the lower right longitude 13 for the lower right latitude 41 and then click uh, the find button after a few seconds you'll see that the result of the query will be listed here all the images uh, in this area will be listed in particular in this uh, tutorial we are going to use uh, a specific image acquired in May 2016 so in the date from enter 2016 5 6 and also the same date in the field 2. This way we are narrowing the search and we'll get only the images acquired in this date. So as you can see these are the granules or tiles of the image acquired on the 6th of May. You can see here the zone, we should select the zone 32TQM, which is uh, an area near Rome. So click this button to download the image preview. Then in download options uh, we should uncheck the bands that we are not going to use band 1, band 9 and band 10. We should uh, leave check this option uh, because we are going to download only this image with the preview loaded in QJS. Uncheck also the preprocess images and load band. Click uh, this button here, select a directory where images will be downloaded and click OK. As you can see the download will start. When the download is finished we can see that in the download directory we have all these files JP2 files which are the central two bands Now we are going to convert the Sentinel-2 bands to reflectance. In particular, click this button here, preprocessing, or select from the SCP menu, preprocessing Sentinel-2. The main interface window will open, and you can see here, directory containing Sentinel-2 bands. Click this button, and select the directory where all the bands were downloaded. Here the JP2 files are listed, 
we should check also apply this one atmospheric correction which is a very basic and simple atmospheric correction and uncheck create band set because we are going to define the band set later so now we can click uh, run define an output directory and click OK the conversion to reflectance uh, will start after a few minutes we'll have the converted bands here loaded in QJS and converted to reflectance So this is a very large area, we need to clip the data to our steady area. So we are going to use to uh, clip multiple images from the preprocessing tool. So select clip multiple rasters. And in the main interface window we should click uh, this button to refresh the layer list. Here we have the list of all the bands loaded in QJS. In this case we can click select all selected bands which are the bands that will be clipped. Then we can use this button here and left click and right click to define the upper left and the lower right corner. So we can define the area that will be used for clipping. So all the images will be clipped according to this area. Also we could change manually, so for instance we can enter here manually the upper left and lower right coordinates according to this tutorial. And then we click this button run, select an output directory. And when the clip is completed, we can see that the clip bands are loaded in QJS. Now we are going to create the input of the classification, which is the band set. So click this button, band set. And in the menu interface, we have the list of, the, of all the bands, single band raster loaded in QJS. We should check uh, only the clip bands. Here. When we have checked these bands, we click this button to add the bands to the band set. And here we have the list of the Sentinel-2 bands in the band set. We should also uh, order the number of the bands. For instance, we have this band 8A, which should be set after the band 8 and before the band 11. We can use this button to move and order the bands. Next we should uh, set uh, also the center wavelength so in the quick wavelength settings select the sentinel 2 and as you can see the center wavelength will be set for all the bands here in the input image we can see that the band set is defined In this tutorial we are going to classify these four land cover classes water, built up, vegetation and bare soil similarly to the first video tutorial. Now we are going to create the training input file so click this button and create a new training file. For instance training And here we have the path to the training file. 
This file will contain both the spectral signatures and the ROI polygons. Now we can also display a color composite of the image. So in the RGB list select for instance 3 to 1, which is a natural color. A virtual raster is automatically created and loaded in QJS. We can also uh, edit the RGB list and for instance set the color composite 3710 and press enter. Here with this color composite and this is particularly useful for uh, highlighting urban areas and we can switch between color composites very easily from the RGB list. Also a new tool is the RGB list uh, which allows for uh, ordering and editing the RGB color composites. So for instance click this button to add the color composite and enter 732 which is the classic uh, near-infrared false color composite. We can also delete color composites and we can switch from the RGB list also using the mouse wheel. So it is very, very quick to change the color composite. Now in the classification dock uh, we can see that this uh, option display and DVI allows for displaying the pixel value of NDVI when we click uh, one of these buttons here for the recreation. So for instance here we can see that values, very low values and negative values uh, for water very high values for vegetation we can also use these buttons here to enhance the contrast and improve the display of the image actually improving the stretching of the color composite so now we can create uh, the first uh, ROI. We can click here for the region growing ROI. We can see that a few pixels are now included. We can also change the distance value and, and redo the ROI. We can see here that these pixels are now included. Next, we set the macro class information and class information for water. And we change the color, the color of the class. Here, for instance, blue. And we can notice that the class ID is automatically increased. And also the macro class is displayed in this tab, macro classes. We should also change these colors here for the macro class water. Now we are going to create the second ROI for the class built up. Again we should use these buttons to enhance the display and the stretching of the color composite. We can see more clearly these buildings with a white roof. Then we are going to create a ROI. We can increase the distance value in order to create uh, larger ROIs. And also if we click different pixels we can see that the shape of the ROI uh, changes. Or we can create a manual ROI including uh, more spectral variability in this ROI. So for instance here this polygon. Next we set the macro class information and the macro class ID for this ROI. So built up and the class information.
And here we have saved our uh, second row for the class buildings built up. Change the color. And we also change the color for the macro class. Here. And now we are going to create the third uh, row. We can change the color composite in order to see more clearly uh, built up areas. So for instance here we are going to create we are going to create a new row for rods. So this color composite 3710 is uh, very useful for highlighting built up structures. And changing the distance values, we can adapt our row uh, in order to select uh, only pixels belonging to rows. So, when we are satisfied, we can save the row, change the class information, the macro class is the same. And click save. As you can see the macro classes is not changed because we have added a new ROI with the same macro class built up. We can create another ROI for another type of uh, built up. You can see here these buildings are different from the previous ones. In this urban area, we have uh, buildings and very narrow roads. Change again the distance parameter. So we can create another ROI here. Again, we change only the class ID and the class information. So here, class information, buildings and roads, very narrow roads. We select the color for the class. You can see that if we change the macro class, also the macro class information uh, changes according to the definition of the macro class. Of course, only for the macro classes already saved. We should collect several rows for each macro class. And here you can see uh, the process of collecting several rows for the class uh, built up, vegetation and bare soil. Of course it is important that these rows are uh, quite large but also quite homogeneous because we are going to use the maximum likelihood algorithm. And here, after the creation of several rows, we can see that in the right part of the image we have uh, clouds. Uh, we could mask clouds in several ways. Uh, for instance, uh, we, we can create ROIs for clouds. So, uh, using region growing, change the distance parameter. and set the macro class ID 0, which is a special code for uh, unclassified pixel. So here, macro class information we can set unclassified. And class information cloud. It is important to set a, a unique class ID, like for the other ROIs. And we click save. We can see that uh, this macro class 0 has been added and we can change also the color here, for instance black. Pixel belonging to this macro class will be uh, set as unclassified.
after the collection of several ROIs, we can create our classification preview. We can also set uh, preview sites of 500 pixels. And after clicking this button here, click in any pixel of the image. In classification algorithm, select the maximum likelihood algorithm that we are going to use in this tutorial. Click in any pixel of the image. It is important that this process is an iterative process. And you can see that the classification preview for the classes has been calculated. Click this button to zoom to the preview. We can see, we can also use this radio button to show and hide the, the preview and use the transparency tool. So we can see that this preview has been classified according to the class ID. If in classification algorithm we check a macro class ID, we are going to use the macro class code. Macro class. So if we click this button, we redo the preview and we can see that this classification is performed with the macro class ID. So it's quite different from the previous one for the colors. And now we can create a preview here. And you can see that also if we create a preview where there are clouds, these clouds are unclassified. We have created the previews, we should also assess uh, the spectral signatures, which is important in order to perform a good classification. So highlight the spectral signatures and click this button to display the spectral signature plot. Here we have the plot. We can also move with the left click inside the plot. We can compare this spectral signature of a vegetation crop with this spectral signature of built up. We can uh, show and hide uh, spectral signatures uh, using this checkbox. Here we can see the, the value range, which is the minimum and maximum values of uh, the ROI. We can also see the signature details here with the, all this information and the sites uh, in pixels, the number of pixels of the ROI. Here we have the values, the mean values and the standard deviation of each ROI which is of course related to the spectral signature. It is important that spectral signatures uh, are distant uh, in order to avoid classification errors. If we click this button here, calculate spectral distances, we can calculate the spectral distances between each pair of ROIs or spectral signatures here we have the jeffries matusita distance, spectral angle, Euclidean distance and break curtis similarity. These are very important to assess the similarity of spectral signatures. We can also uh, assess the classification uh, disabling uh, one or more spectral signatures. So for instance we can uncheck these uh, spectral signatures and redo uh, the preview. We can see that this preview has been calculated without uh, the spectral signatures uh, that we have uh, unchecked. We could also use this button to delete uh, one uh, or more spectral signatures that we have highlighted. But now we are going to select again the spectral signatures. 
and redo the preview. The spectral signatures are saved in the training input file every time we click the save button, the QGIS save button, which also saves the project. So we should click save quite often. Now I have collected uh, several ROIs, of course the more is the better. It is important that every class is uh, represented. We can double click uh, on the ROI signature list to show and zoom uh, directly to every ROI we want to display. We can use this button to zoom to the image extent. So we are going to create a classification using the macro class ID and the maximum likelihood algorithm. But before uh, performing the classification it is important to set uh, this parameter in the tool settings of the plugin. In particular the available RAM parameter. Uh, it is important of course to increase this value and you should set a value which is a uh, half of the uh, computer available RAM. So for instance we set one gigabyte of available RAM. Then in classification output we can click RAM, select an output destination. After a few minutes the entire input image will be classified. If we zoom here over the cloud, we can see that the cloud area has been lived and classified. Of course, uh, we could also improve uh, this mask of uh, cloud cover with other methods that we are going to see in other tutorials. So we can see here the classification of built-up areas. And also we have some classification errors, for instance here, over pear soil. We have also uh, other tools for uh, improving this classification using uh, these post-processing tools. For instance, uh, the tool Edit Raster for editing the raster values directly and also classification sieve for removing small patches, classification erosion and classification deletion. But we are going to see these tools in other tutorials. So well done, we have completed the second basic tutorial. And the next few weeks I'm going to upload several new tutorials about this new version 5 of the same automatic classification plugin and please join the Facebook group and the Google Plus community. And thank you for watching.